I can't imagine sitting in a better place if you want to be a part of success. If you really want to understand sort of in one corporate experience, what makes the company tick, what makes it work, and what preserves that bottom line, procurement is the place where you really need to spend a stint in your career. It's an absolutely fascinating place to work. Hello, this is Jennifer Navarrete. Welcome to the Walk Talk Challenge. Today, I am with Kelly Barner, who is a procurement professional, published author, thought leader in the supply chain industry. And if that wasn't enough, she's also a podcast host of Dial P for Procurement. So Kelly, welcome to the show. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> well, I read that little bio, and I have to say, I don't know if I've ever said the word procurement so much in one <laughs> sitting. But if you, I started thinking about it as I was like, okay, procurement, supply chain. I'm like, it's not something that the average Joe or Jane thinks much about. But in the reality, it's what makes things happen. Like you don't go to the grocery store. You don't go shopping. You don't go buy lumber to build a house. There's nothing that you do that supply chain and procurement wasn't involved in. So what is it that got you, this is going to be the thing that I do and I'm going to do it and I'm going to spread the word about how to do it and how to do it well? Well, I was actually lucky because like a lot of people, I fell into procurement. You know, no one is five years old saying when I grow up, I want to be in procurement. That's not a thing. (laughs) Um, But I was working for the parent company of the stop and shop supermarket chain and I was moved into procurement and it all of a sudden was like realizing I was living inside one of those Mr. Rogers factory tours that so many of us watched growing up. And I suddenly found out, well, where do those plastic bags come from that the apples go in or who is it that keeps the floors clean or the biggest mystery of all? What is it that actually happens when a bird finds its way into a supermarket, right? And is hovering somewhere above produce. And so it was a great way for me to really see from the inside out what makes a business tick, what allows even the biggest businesses to create individual value for all of their customers and to do it by partnering with product and service providers in their supply chain. So for me, it's sort of like disassembling every industry, every business see how it works. Break it down to its little components. And it's been such a fascinating place to work. So just as you were talking, I pictured you with your detective hat and the, <laughs> the spy glass, or not the spy glass, what's that called? The spy glass. glass. Yeah. Yes. And you're, you're going around trying to discover the answer to these questions and more. So that's phenomenal. You know, you just made this a, a procurement and the supply chain so super duper exciting. <laughs> so I, well, I'm especially suggest- after the last year and a half, right? Like, Anybody that's listening, if you ever thought to yourself any time in the last 18 months, why isn't there any more X on the shelf? Like put anything you want in X. It could be chicken wings, toilet paper, hand sanitizer, anything at all. The answer lays somewhere inside procurement and supply chain. Ooh, ooh. So you write about it. You talk about it. You're a thought leader in the industry. Folks yeah. know you really, really well in this space. What are things that someone either is considering getting into the procurement space doesn't know about that they should? Like when you look back on your history and on your knowledge base, you're like, gosh, I wish I had known this. I think the number one thing I would say is that it's an excellent place to spend some time in a corporation if you have C-level aspirations. Um, And the, the big example that many of us hold out when we sort of advocate on behalf of procurement supply chain careers is a guy you may or may not have heard of named Tim Cook at a little company called Apple, yeah. um, he was in supply chain. And so it was his ability to understand who are the other organizations that we need to interface with in order to deliver the best new consumer electronic device to the customer on time with better features at a reasonable cost without unduly impacting the internet, making sure that we don't have human rights abuses in our supply chain. It doesn't necessarily seem like the most obvious stepping stone to go from procurement to go to the C-suite, but I'll tell you what, you will never regret doing a rotation in procurement and or supply chain if you are hoping someday to have a C at the beginning of your title. That's what I would say. That is amazing. I did not know that about Tim Cook, but it makes a lot of sense. You know, why wouldn't you uh, bring someone like that up to the C-suite? Because they know they are kind of like the backbone of your company because if things aren't going and moving shipping coming in if things aren't happening it means that uh, supply chain and procurement isn't happening so that's that's phenomenal wow that's really exciting okay so the next thing i want to find out is you know the books that you've written procurement has changed over time 
Yes, it's not the same as it was you know, a year ago, not the same as it was 10 years ago. Talk to me about what you've seen shift in procurement. Yeah, it, this is actually really funny. One of my very favorite procurement books I didn't write it's called The Procurement <laughs> Game Plan by uh, two of my friends, Sohila Lavani and Charles Dominic. And they wrote the book about 10 years ago. And one of the sort of seminal quotes from their book is that procurement is like the island of misfit toys, right? Like from the old Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Mm -hmm. It's the place where you assign people where you never want to see them again. So <laughs> 10 years ago, and it's so funny, and I, I always tell people, I can say this because I'm in procurement. I'm talking about me too. It's not judgy. 10 years ago, I would share that line with people in conversations and in interviews. And there was always sort of this, like, uncomfortable response to it. Like, oh, okay, like, we're implying that I don't work in a cool place, or we're implying that I wasn't on a management track. Now, I share that line with people, and they literally, like, belly laugh. Like, open mouth, eyes closed, head back. They laugh because we've become so much more strategic and so much more ambitious, so much better educated with much better soft skills, and the company literally can't function without us. And so now it's this funny thought. Now people laugh at the idea that once upon a time, procurement was kind of the place that you sent the deadweight weirdos so that you didn't have to deal with them anymore. It is so not the case anymore. We are at the heart of every important strategic conversation that's happening in a company. And it really comes down to the people that we've managed to bring into the field and the talent that we've managed to attract. And then the additional investments in terms of soft skills and category expertise that we've given to those people to make them an even stronger team. That is phenomenal. So it's kind of like a, a procurement is like Cinderella, huh? Oh, I love that. Yes. Pro procurement of Cinderella is much more appealing than procurement is the island of misfit toys. Um, <laughs> we're, we're definitely getting our happy ending. You know, and it, it has been a very difficult year for procurement, like it has been for everybody else. But I think it gave us an opportunity to kind of break out of our shells, come out from the shadows, and show everybody what we can do. It's sort of like we have been preparing for this moment without necessarily knowing it. And I don't see savvy companies ever going back to that island of misfit toys idea. Mm, mm, it makes so much sense. Well, what are your words of wisdom for someone who is looking? Um, a lot of people have really had time during the pandemic to reevaluate their career and life choices. And so you see a lot of people really making hard pivots, you know, really big shifts in areas that are nothing like what they were doing before because they realize that that doesn't suit them anymore. And so they're open mm -hmm. to opportunities. What are your words of wisdom for someone who is thinking that what they've been doing isn't working and they want something new and exciting or something that will challenge them? So if you're somebody that's interested in being an active part in making a company more successful. You know, we talk a lot uh, when we discuss corporate finance, you talk about like the top line versus the bottom line, right? And if we're super, super generalist, there's basically three essential things that happen between that top line and that bottom line. There's sales money, the revenue that comes in. There are corporate expenses in terms of salaries and, and buildings and that kind of thing. And then there's all the products and services that come from suppliers. And that huge chunk, everything really except salaries, insurance, taxes, and the sales activity bringing business in, that's what procurement manages. And so procurement is the difference between a predictable bottom line and an uncertain one. We are the difference between a big bottom line and a smaller one. And increasingly, procurement is actually starting to impact the top line. Because if we can arm our sales and marketing folks with the intelligence that we've gathered, they can go out and better position products. They can go out and say, did you know that X percent of our supply base is with certified diverse suppliers? That's a selling point. That goes to brand image. And it's the work that procurement does around finding the best supply partners that offer value at an efficient price, that offer us an ability to impact local communities, be more diverse be more sustainable, and really allow our company to make a better product or service that is offered up for sale, I can't imagine sitting in a better place if you want to be a part of success. If you really want to understand sort of in one corporate experience what makes the company tick, 
what makes it work and what preserves that bottom line. Procurement is the place where you really need to spend a stint in your career. It's an absolutely fascinating place to work. Where can folks go to get connected with you, to learn more about what you're doing? Do you have any upcoming events, any upcoming launches? I mean, they, they're going to want to know more about you. How do they get that? Absolutely. So the, the straightest way to find me is come to LinkedIn. I'm Kelly Barner with everything procurement around me. Um, buyer's Meeting Point is what I consider sort of my online home if you want to look at some of my content. But I also host Dial P for Procurement, which is a monthly video live stream that runs on pretty much every platform. It's part of the Supply Chain Now family of live streams. It's the third Tuesday of every month from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Eastern. And then I'm also the brand new host of the Sourcing Hero podcast, which is a joint collaboration between Art of Procurement and Una, where just like I'm doing with you today, Jennifer, we tell stories, we tell life stories of the people who work in procurement in all different kinds of companies and industries and are willing to share their career journeys, their advice, and anything that they've gained from their experiences that others might benefit from. Phenomenal. Thank you so much for joining me on the Walk Talk Challenge. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you for having me.